All right, so, hey everyone. Hey everyone. Um, since I haven't been able to get out on the water a whole lot uh, due to weather and other factors, uh, today I thought I would do a video responding to one of the questions that I get asked most frequently. Um, and that is to do a walkthrough of my boat. People are really interested in my Ginu and you know they want to learn the details of it. So this should be uh, helpful to those people that are interested. Um, now before we do that, let me just say that this is a 10 year old boat. And being a 10 year old boat, it's got 10 years of wear on it. It's not a boat that's been sitting in the garage for 10 years, barely getting used. This is an extremely hard worked boat. So keep that in mind. It's, I didn't specially clean it for this video or anything. This is how I use it every single day that I'm on the water. So, um, so to start with, you can see the boat's name is the Gotta Fly. And, uh, you know, that kind of has a dual meaning. Um, the logo kind of represents a fly line as well as a rooster tail behind a boat going fast. So um, that's what that's about. Um, the layout of this boat is what's called a LT25, low tide 25 DHSC. So that means dual decks with hatches, side console. And this is, like I indicated, a 2012. So it's an older boat. You can still buy them exactly the same way, but you know, I've had this one for a long time and it served me very, very well. So now as we walk around the boat, you see here at the bow, we've got you know, typical LED shark eye nav lights installed, um, custom trolling motor mount. And this is a, this was originally a Minn Kota quick release bracket that I have modified. Um, I had a custom mount built to fit on this and I can basically just pull this handle and release this trolling motor and take it off the boat. Um, this is the motor that you typically see me using in the lagoon, in salt water, etc. Um, however, sometimes you will see that I will have swapped this out with a motor guide XI3 that I use only in freshwater for crappie and shad. Okay, next we have the side console. This is just the standard side console that you get from Custom Gino if you order the side console model. Um, it comes with, you know, the tilt helm. Um, now, it was just bare bones when I got it. I added the GPS, the gauges, the switch panel, uh, etc. Uh, this control box, this is also a custom control box. Uh, it was originally branded Quicksilver. It was a Mercury product and it had the square kind of throttle handle on it. Um, and I took that and in the machine shop I modified a Tahatsu handle to fit on the Mercury control box. And uh, I did that so that I could get the dual switches that you see there so that I can control my jack plate and tilt and trim unit both right from the handle. Moving on here we've got the half height folding platform and that is a custom platform um, I actually found it on Craigslist believe it or not for a hundred dollars and it ended up quickly that I just decided to go with it as it was so um, that was one of the best buys when I was building this boat was that hundred dollar pulling platform and it is fantastic so the other thing I wanted to say about the pulling platform is you see all these rod holders on there now some of them are permanent. The ones in the back are on there all the time. However, the temporary ones in the front, I have them on there right now because it's shad and crappie season. Uh, those are the only times of year that I use those. So most of the year, you won't see those on there. And then around the boat, I've got a couple of these tackle webs, tackle storage units. Um, those are great. And in there, I actually have the transducer for the uh, GPS, for the fish finder. So it's on a suction cup mount, and I just put it on the back when I use it for fresh water. 
so I never use it in salt water, but that's where I keep it when I'm not using it. Then on the back, we have a Mercury C Pro 25. This is a 2005 Mercury C Pro. Um, so it's a two stroke. Um, I did the 30 horsepower upgrade to it and it has a Stingray Starfire hydrofoil on it and I usually run a Powertech prop. So um, that is mounted on a custom combo tilt and trim jack plate unit and I built that in the shop by taking a PT35, tearing it apart, using some of the parts from it and custom making brackets and mounting motors and and doing all the wiring to turn it into a combo unit so um, that that's actually one of the proudest things I have about building this boat is I made that unit and it only added a quarter inch extra setback uh, turning it into a combo unit so um, that worked out really well now on the other side here is where I have the 8-foot Talon. Um, this is actually the second Talon that I've had on the boat, so I really like those. Um, and when you see me in the videos reaching for my hip, um, kind of pressing a button on a controller, that's what that is for. I'm actually pinning the boat in place or pulling the Talon up so I can move. Um, so, okay, so let's get to the interior of the boat. So. In the front hatch, you can see I have a dual battery set up. I've got uh, breakers. I've got a switch so that I can use either battery for any function. The big Optima battery is typically just for trolling. The smaller Odyssey is for starting and running the electronics. But I can switch between the two or I can tie them together if need be. And then I keep my fire extinguisher up here. I keep uh, the throwable that I, you're required to have. I keep bow lines, a mushroom anchor, etc. all up here in this front compartment. Now in here, this is basically my tackle storage. As you can see, I've got several tackle boxes. Um, that green bag there is my fly box. Um, behind that, I've got an extra set of rain gear and I've got my required type 3 inflatable uh, life jackets. So I keep all that in this hatch and then there's some various tools and other products that you'll see me using while I'm out on the water. Um, this this is a 40 quart ice cool cooler. Um, you can't get those in the US anymore which is a shame because that cooler only cost me about 50 bucks and you know it's a fantastic cooler it's roto molded they were around really before the whole big hype with roto molded coolers and before the prices got you know out of hand so uh if i could buy more of them i would but that's the only one i've got right now and it's a great cooler and hopefully i <laughs> hopefully i don't lose it or something because I, I i love that cooler um i keep you know pliers mounted on the side of the console there uh fly rod a uh, spare anchor pin, a uh, spare rod. I keep all that in the rod holders on that side. Um, then over here in the rear hatch, this is just kind of, this is where I keep cases for electronics. I keep my GPS case in there. I've got spare clothing. Um, there's actually a spare gallon of gasoline in here. Um, I keep two toolboxes, waterproof toolboxes, and there are a ton of spare parts in there uh, tools uh, you know common things that I might need like spark plugs uh, cotter pins prop nuts there's a spare prop in there um, then I keep some other dry boxes with like toilet paper all of my licenses uh, any paperwork registration paperwork that I might need and then there's spare clothing in there too so and then the bilge you know it's it's a bilge so you got bilge pump, you got a six gallon gas tank in here. Um, I also keep a bucket in there. Um, and that bucket has things like cast net. Uh, it's got a bunch of lines in there. It's got wading shoes, uh, 
sunscreens, basically anything that gets messy, I keep in that bucket so it doesn't make a mess elsewhere on the boat. Um, and then of course, you know, I've got Hammer Tech Marine products. I've got a platform holder there on the platform. Uh, these happen to be the semi-snagless holders that I have on the boat right now. So I'll swap those out from time to time. Uh, and uh, being held by those Hammer Tech holders is a uh, Carbon Marine Mangrove 19 foot 6 push pull. So this is, I have two of those. Um, this is the one that I'm currently using. Uh, and then I guess the last thing to talk about is the trailer itself. Uh, two years ago I replaced the original trailer with an all aluminum continental trailer um, and then I went through and I replaced all of the galvanized because there was a lot of galvanized parts on it still even though it's supposed to be all aluminum and I replaced all of that with stainless steel. So other than a few odds and ends here and there this is all aluminum stainless steel now um, and it's got the fold away tongue and spare tire up here in the front so um, and that I think about wraps it up so that is the walkthrough of my LT25 so hope you guys like it